I'm going to go stick a finger in and see how warm it is. It's been a rough start to Chapter 5. I'm good. Come on. I'm coming. In 500 meters, arrive at Traverse City on the left. Our lack of planning has been taking a toll on us since the starting of this chapter. And with a long weekend coming up, it's just too late to make any reservations. I needed a break from the uncertainty, and we lucked out with a three-night stay at the Traverse City State Park, thankfully. Problem is, it had a lot of low-hanging branches, which made finding a spot tough, and we hate parking in the dark. Being an RV Sumtimer is not always sunshine, good views, and great experiences. But we were really loving Michigan, even if we had to do some stealth camping, you know, over the long weekend. Let us show you how it went with a few cool places you might like to visit in Michigan, too. Well, we're finally going to go do something fun. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing lots fun. It's been a rough start to Chapter 5. We've just been... I don't know. We didn't plan. You know we don't plan and then the fact that we didn't plan and the long weekends here and where can we go and everything's booked up. It's been tough. Busy. Yeah. Yeah. But we're in Traverse City, Michigan and they've got some village commons thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, I think it was a mental asylum or something. I believe it was. So I'm we're, feeling like it might be appropriate for it us. could. It could be perfect actually. <laughs> We'll head down Front Street, which is kind of a downtown area, and, and end up there, and we'll see if Denise ever leaves there. <laughs> <laughs> Point being, we're going to have some fun today. We're going on a bike ride. Apparently there's a lot of bike trails around here and cool things to see. The sun is shining at least till 3, right? Yeah, then there's thunder showers. We are on Lake Michigan, so we'll check out the shoreline of that as well. Yeah, so uh, let the fun part of Chapter 5 begin. Come along, let's go. go. So far, maybe more later. It's colder than Shushwap Lake. Is it? Yeah, it is. It's really windy today too, but it, I guess the wind's going that way because it's real calm right here. Okay, you try. Uh... You guys wanted to try, right? <laughs> Put your hand. Your reaction? Too cold for me. Huh, I have to go back to Shushwap. Maybe I should soak your shirt in this though since you've stained the white. I don't know what it is about this shirt, but every time I wear it, I get coffee on it. I know. That wasn't even me. I was riding along, hit a bump, and my drink holder splashed out and hit me. Every single time. Every time. Oh, well, we should probably have cheesecake before we leave. Mm -hmm. So let's just go over here. Okay. Let's see. We're back at the Traverse City uh, State Mental Insane Asylum, Asylum. <laughs> uh, which was the term back in the 1800s when this was built. It was actually finished in 1885. 85, yeah. But remember yesterday we told you we were just going to come check this out. Well, we found out that we could get on a tour. So we did. Unfortunately, and we weren't able to take photography or record, but we were able to take some still pictures and did get a wealth of information. It was a really good tour. Our tour guide actually grew up uh, in this neighborhood. His yeah. father was the head of psychiatry or something like that in one of the departments here. You know, a lot of uh, people with mental health issues, which it was amazing back then what they would call a mental health issue. Mm -hmm. Um, certainly not things today that we would ever consider a mental health issue. Um, but they just didn't have the diagnostics back then. No. They didn't have drugs back then, but they did end up doing, you know, uh, electric shock ther therapies and lobotomies. They only did 
two lobotomies here, did they not? Uh, he, yeah, I think the doctor was brought in to do like to 400 do or something. Yeah. But he pioneered some uh, drug therapies. Right, some of which are in use today, actually. Yeah. And uh, those drugs, when he tweaked a little here and tweaked a little there, actually helped people to the point that some of them were discharged. Yes. So the property's pretty amazing, built when it was. It was finished in 1885? Yeah. How many million bricks? Nine, oh, I think there was 19 like 19 million, million bricks, bricks put in it. It was it built was in less than three years. It had uh, running water, it had electricity. Um, it even had a sprinkler system for fire suppression, which was a very new thing. Yeah. It was a self-sustaining property. So, you know, it had dairy, it had uh, all kinds Beef, of agriculture. Chickens, eggs. It, uh, they canned everything, they processed everything, they had cold storage, they, and, and the patients even took part in a lot of that mm -hmm. work um, just to give them a, a feeling of purpose and, and... And to help out. And the theory here, the idea behind this hospital was very humane, uh, that people were to be respected and treated well with windows and light and fresh air and opportunities to go out and happy, friendly staff, never restrained. No one yeah, was restrained. Yeah, they were not to be restrained. No. So they had a lot of different therapies that worked as best as they could and they tried to help a lot of people, I think. I also found it really interesting that um, this was a state-funded facility and it was a luxury facility. In the peak, I think it was in the 50s, early 60s, there was as many as 3,800 patients here uh, and up to 800 staff members. Uh, at that time yeah. and then that slowly waned off and due to new legislation or whatever budget cuts, uh, budget cuts it um, died off during the 70s and in 89 it actually closed its doors yeah which was sad uh, since then it fell into a real disrepair and now there's some groups that are restoring it and they are really restoring it back to its original condition and then uh, bringing offices condos yeah. uh, shops. shops you can yeah get just restaurants about everything here. baking so it's a it's a whole little central village unto itself mm -hmm. pretty very cool place to come i'm glad we came yeah and um also of note they said that after 1989 when the facility closed and leading up to that time or the crime rates due to mental health issues spiked and has since. So clearly this did have an impact on that or the closing of this did have an impact on that. It was said that it was so much healthier and uh, more efficient for, you know, there to be one caregiver to, you know, 10 people versus the one-on-one -on -one type of thing that the um, government was moving to because really what they were moving to was out of funding. Yeah. And into being able to charge insurance companies is what they were looking for. And was it not family assisted type stuff yeah. where it wasn't as regulated and often people went off their meds and then when they went off the wall and then you're back in the same boat as, yeah. as they were in the beginning versus a more managed approach. Yeah, but nonetheless, this is a beautiful property. It's got quite the history and the tours here are wonderful. So if you're ever in Traverse City, this is a great place to stop by for a couple of hours and uh, enjoy the information. Take in the history. Yeah. And it's great to see properties like this be rehabilitated and used for other things because it is amazing architecture. Right. And it would be a travesty to see it just Get torn demolished. down. Anything you like in here? Oh my god, look at it. <laughs> what about this one? I love that one. And I like that open range. Okay, let's make it easier. Show me the ones you don't want. <laughs> this one. <laughs> <laughs> the tent. <laughs> I 
are there campgrounds around here or are they well ours are all booked they're booked yeah I okay know. to the shores of Lake Michigan. It was about a two and a half mile ride on a nice trail from Sleeping Bear parking lot. There's another two and a half miles or so and there's a little town. We're gonna go check that out. So what are we doing? found this place called Boondocks. Live music, snacks, what more could we want? It's right up our alley. We got back from our ride. How far did we go? It's about 10 miles round trip, so we just did five miles just now. It was good. We went to that boondockers place for dinner and I enjoyed it. Yeah, no, it was good. It was good atmosphere. Yeah. And the trails are awesome. Totally yeah, great biking great. trails. So now they say up there, uh, we're going to see the water from there. So we're going to go up there and see if we can catch a sunset. See if that's real. Do you think we'll make it up there before sunset? I don't know. I'm kind of pooped right now. <laughs> let's, let's go. After the bike ride, we might not make it up the hill, but we'll try. <laughs> We're working it for you we, all. We are. We're giving it our all. <laughs> this is us hiking again. <laughs> How are you doing? This is steeper than it looks. I know. <laughs> Come on, Clark! Deliverance! Water! I need water! We're getting there. That's quite the climb. I know, but you still got quite a bit more to go. We gotta get over there. Way over there. We can do it. Oh, at least it's not as steep. seems like every time we think we're there. Well, it's not dark yet, but we've gone over about three hills thinking that that's it. So hopefully this is the last one. And hopefully we see something good after that. Okay. A lot of sand, a lot of, a lot sand. of hills. It's not entirely dark yet. And we did make it to be able to see Lake Michigan. It is a beautiful sunset. It was about five hills to climb, but worth it, don't you think? It was worth it, yeah. But <laughs> there were times I thought it was. <laughs> Just picture walking in the sand, deep sand, at what? I figure it's about a 50% grade. Yeah, it's probably about a 20. <laughs> Something like that. It seems very steep it to seems me. seems a lot Over. steeper when you're on it over and over and over and when you get to the top you think oh thank goodness and, and another there's hill. still more <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyhow we made her that's it for us much easier going down <laughs> you don't fall <laughs> see the beaver yet no it's probably at least a 50%. Really? <laughs> no. Where are we? <sighs> Over two more hills. Ready? Come okay. with me. <laughs> Stealth camping's a little tougher for us as well. We are a little more obvious than the van lifers, but being able to move our house easily allows us to get up and go whenever we think it's best to move on. And while well, we catch some good sunrises too. This is not something we do often, but it sure is nice to know we can if we need to. Thank you. Or wait a sec, can we stay? No, we're all full. Oh,
That's what I thought. <laughs> I like the first option. <laughs> Arriving at Grand Traverse Lighthouse on the left. It's a Labor Day long weekend and our lack of planning has been a bit troublesome. Although it's actually been a great few days. We've managed quite well. We have. We went to the Sleeping Bear Dunes National Park and that was pretty cool. Our National Park Pass paid off and there was some amazing bike trails and stuff there. Yeah, there were great big bike trails. We did get to the top of the dunes to, to get that sunset. Oh, my calves hurt today. <laughs> we, that was a bit of a workout for us, but it was super fun and very cool. Those dunes just go mm -hmm. on forever and ever and ever. <clears throat> but now we're at the Lilanu State Park, which is like north of Traverse City, up at the very tip, and there's a lighthouse here. Yeah, Grand Traverse uh, Lighthouse. So we're going to check that out. Maybe if we can, we'll get to the top of it. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> see how these legs of ours do. So we're checking out this Grand Traverse Lighthouse Museum because you can come in the fully restored house that was the where the lighthouse keeper and he did have an assistant too at some point. So him and his family lived in one spot on, on the property and then there's like an identical place that hopefully we'll get to see where the assistant stayed. So this was like the formal dining room and I mean I think they ate mostly in the kitchen but I mean they had eight kids. So it seems like part of the keeper's job was to keep track of everything in a log, every wick, every bit of coal, everything they used. This would have created some heat, okay? And uh, I guess make sure that the lighthouse stayed functioning for passing ships. The phonograph. Oh, I have a problem with the do not touch part. Come on, this is the bedroom, the master. Oh, it's pretty big. I'm impressed. Look at this. This is a pretty big bedroom. And look at the beams and the construction, hey? Very nice. And then I think all the kids slept upstairs, so let's go up there. And then we get to go in the light. I love these doors. Like, this is all solid wood, right? They didn't do stuff like they do today. This is just like a replica thing, but there's the lighthouse and originally it had six oil lamps with a bunch of reflectors and so the lighthouse keeper's job was to stay up there all night and make sure they stayed lit so that any ships traveling would see them and then they had to in the morning clean them up and all that. In 1857 though, they upgraded to what they called a Fresnel lens and this here is a I guess an example of that. So that must have made the job a lot easier. Okay, one more set of ladder legs. You gotta watch your head here too. I'll be careful. It's kind of a squeeze. So if you look down there, that red roofed building, in 1899 they put in a foghorn type of thing and uh, they had to like put a bunch of coal and stuff in there to build up heat and pressure to make the sound go off to help tell the ships they're getting too close, I guess. So while we're at the lighthouse, we decided to go for a little hike. And yeah. Denise once again has very appropriate footwear on. These are my hiking shoes. Actually, last night at the sand dunes, didn't you go buck? Nothing on your feet? I did. I walked in the sand dunes without shoes, um, which I think was smarter than with shoes. Very exfoliating. The point is, we've hiked through all sorts of terrain. 
And here we are on the shores of Lake Michigan, once hiking again. once again. Rocky. Yes. Oh yeah. Potential to twist an ankle. There is. But we've done the uh, shores of Lake Michigan now. We've done Joshua Tree. We have done the Valley of Fire. And we did Sleeping Bear Sand Dunes. Oh, and didn't we do a bike hiking thing at Karchner as well? Yeah, we did. And we did a bike hiking thing, um, you know, the alligator. Oh, yes, down... Uh, was that Alligator Alley? Was that what that was called? Well, yeah. The uh, Alligator Gars? Yeah, that was the one. So we really have bikes, or bike hiked and hiked through a lot of different locations. Getting quite experienced. Yeah. And clearly my shoes are doing well. Oh, yeah. No, I think you got the right shoe for the right uh, walk. So this, I believe, is the replacement for the lighthouse. You'll note the more modern architecture and, and beauty <laughs> that, uh, that come with this technology. Don't you think ships these days would have all of the GPS's and depth things? Gear to not need that sort of thing? Just wondering. Well, I guess their gear could fail, right? Right, and then you need a lighthouse. And then you need the lighthouse. 1880s. <laughs> 2000. What's more interesting to you? Crossing paths with some ridiculous Michigan drivers and seeing how the police handled it, or rather didn't handle it, we were very relieved to use our Boondockers Welcome membership. At last, we had found a comfortable, secure place to stay for the night. Hit subscribe and join us next time as we share more fun places to explore in Michigan. See you out there.